What's going on, YouTube? I'm Crow, one part of Jackal and Crow, the show with me and my brother, where we give you commentary or reactions or our opinions about random shit, politics, movies, Netflix TV shows, HBO Max TV shows, all the streaming services because we can't have too many. Anyway, like I was saying, uh, this review is going to be about The Lincoln Lawyer, the number one show on Netflix for like the past couple weeks, so I had to check it out. Uh, even though I've never seen a lawyer show myself, uh, I decided to give it a watch. Uh, I had the dude from Insidious in there, the, you know, the funny camera guy. Uh, he was like a weird PI, I guess, in this show. Uh, and he was a biker, which kind of fit him. I don't understand what's with white people with long hair, but, you know, it works for him. So, he was funny in the show. I liked it. The main guy, Mickey, I don't know the actor's name because I'm terrible with actor names. However, uh, he did really remind me of Daredevil in this, although his accent came out a couple of times. And I was like, what the fuck? Didn't really uh, remind me of some dude that lived in L.A. forever. However, um, let's get into, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get to the first part of this tv series so basically this takes place with a lawyer who got into a terrible accident a year before the regular sh show starts uh he got into like some surfer accident not really relevant to the rest of the storyline the, that he surfs anyway uh but anyway he got hurt and got a bunch of surgeries became addicted to opioids like the rest of america <laughs> anyway uh to drown out his pain kept popping pills ended up going to rehab uh comes back and luckily for him uh he has a law degree didn't get disbarred after becoming an addict somehow i don't is is it automatic disbar do you think i don't know i'm not a lawyer anyway so basically this dude goes and gets like the lottery jackpot because some other lawyer got murdered and gave all of his cases to this dude for no apparent reason. They were just colleagues at one point in time and they talked to each other a couple of times and he was like, you know what? I'm going to leave my entire practice to Mickey Hall Haller. I think his name is Mickey Haller and Mickey Haller is like, Oh my God, I get a second chance. You know, I have to fucking do these cases and the case that he gets is like this huge murder case that's basically he's defending a guy who's the equivalent of the dude who is the CEO of FromSoft who did the Elden Ring game. Because that's the only comparison that I can really make because nobody else is playing like, everybody's playing Apex I guess right now and League and all that shit. But Elden Ring's relevant anyway. So basically he's defending... Elden Ring guy, but he made this game called Nocturna, which is like Unreal Engine 5, super realistic graphics with people who look like they're straight out of real life, pretty much. And he, this guy's on trial for a supposed, like, murder or whatever. Allegedly, he murdered his wife. And come to find out, there's like a whole bunch of twists and turns that are just way, 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 way over the top. Uh for a lawyer type of show but i i could dig it you know uh it definitely kept me entertained throughout the entire thing so that was great uh i hate court i've been on jury duty not for a murder case however uh <laughs> so it was a little bit more enjoyable than that with the family drama this dude has two wives which are like they look like they're in their like mid 30s or something but i'm 23 bro would smash 100% they're both milfs it's fantastic uh there's nobody fat in this tv show which it's a little sad none of the main cast are like really fat people i guess the guy who played insidious is a little bit on the heavier side but he's not like fat you know i want my representation bro where's my big boys anyway uh <laughs> um so he ends up going to court to defend this guy and a bunch of different other cases that just so happen to be intermingled in this huge master plot by somebody throughout the show. I'm not going to give any spoilers. Uh, this huge mastermind. 
And, you know, he ends up getting, like, this driver who's also an addict. Uh, and they end up helping each other throughout the film, which was kind of nice. She was, like, sleeping in her car. She luckily got a job to drive this lawyer, making, I don't know how much money this lawyer's paying her to drive him to and from the courthouses constantly because this dude has to drive his four Lincoln cars everywhere. I don't know what the registration fees and taxes are on these cars, bro, but it got to be astronomical for LA and the freaking California area, bro. Those dudes are paying like what? Is it eight dollars a gallon for gas now? This dude got four cars, two SUVs. This dude has to be paying like three hundred at the pump every time he's on E, bro. But <laughs> somehow he's still rich. Got a crazy penthouse type thing. But that's besides the point. That's, that's not what this movie or the show's about. Uh, he ends up getting this guy. Uh, surprise, surprise. He gets him off of the murder charge, right? Not really surprising. He's the main character. He has to win the court case. So he wins the court case. And there's like a bunch of stuff that's left unchecked, which is like really fucking crazy. And there's a bunch of rocks that are left unturned. And one, like I said, he has two ex-wives. His first ex-wife, the brunette, has like a, a side story in this show that could com be taken completely out of it, in my opinion. Because it didn't really make sense that to me, her entire story. Maybe it just didn't leave me that entertained, so I kind of toned it out. But her side of the story was just pointless, really. Like, there was a guy who got stabbed, and she was like, oh my gosh, I gotta save this case. She ends up getting fired at the end of the TV show. I was like, why? Why does this even matter? This is irrelevant. In my opinion. In my opinion. Although, you know, they're working on their relationships throughout the thing. The fact that he's close with second wife because she works for Mickey Haller and the first wife and him have a daughter together and it's like a weird triangle situation and insidious dude gets tries to get married to second wife and he also works for mickey hall there i'm like why <laughs> i mean it makes for interesting tv don't get me wrong but it's just so confusing to me the fact that the way these relationships turned out would never happen in real life in my opinion um but it is what it is. Uh, so, as the show can comes to its conclusion with a huge, you know, uh, it gives you a lot of closure until it doesn't. And I, it, it doesn't make sense to me because Netflix doesn't have the budget to keep making these long-ass seasons of stuff, especially with their subscriber count just tanking recently i don't think this will get a second season so i just kind of was like hoping for a one-off and it wasn't that they l leave you on a cliffhanger again and you're just like guess we're gonna have to wait probably two years in order to see this epic conclusion but it was a good ride it left you in a lot of suspense i'll give it that so all in all if i had to give it a good rating it would definitely be probably a B, B plus uh, TV series, especially for something that is out of my comfort zone for stuff that I watch. Uh, so I would definitely give it a, a check it out. Does it deserve that number one spot? I would say for the older generation, sure, because law is interesting. Uh, if you want to watch it with your kids and stuff, they will definitely not know what's going on. However, uh, if if, unless they're into like mock trial and stuff, which I can't knock you for that. You know, lawyers are, it's a good profession. They pay well. So maybe you can get your child into this show and then they'll be making the big bucks once they become inspired to become a lawyer. I don't know. Want to recommend it though. Uh, cause every lawyer I've met is kind of snobby, but that's besides the point. So definitely go check it out. Uh, once again, I'm Crow, one part of the Jackal and Crow show. Uh, feel free to subscribe. There will definitely be more content coming. 
This is my first video ever recorded. Uh, so please, if you would, drop a subscribe, smash that like button. I would definitely appreciate it. And I will see you guys sometime soon in the future, probably. I want to kind of see that Maverick show or movie. Dang, dude, I keep getting those mixed up. But thanks for watching. Deuces.